Okay, we are going to look um, into determination of specific heat capacity. I want to say this, there are two methods used to determine specific heat capacity of substance. One of them is called the method of mixtures. The other one is the electrical method. So here we are going to look at, uh, we are going to start with the method of mixtures. To determine the specific heat capacity of a substance, the method of mixture is often used. A vessel called calorimeter of known specific heat um, capacity and mass is partially filled with a mass MW of water at a temperature T1 and then mounted on a suitable manner so that it is thermally insulated from the outside world. A mass M of the substance of unknown specific capacity is heated to a high temperature TB, usually in boiling water, and then quickly transferred to the calorimeter. The temperature of the calorimeter and the water contained quickly rises to a new value. T2, it slowly, it slowly begins to fall as heat is lost to the room. If all the masses are measured in grams, the temperatures in degrees Celsius and the specific heat capacities in calories per gram per degree Celsius, um, the block of substance has thus given, that means this will be the, uh, the heat lost by the substance, calories of heat to the calorimeter and contained water. If no loss occurred, this must be equal to the heat gained by them, which is this, okay? I'm going to explain that, okay? So, remember, MC theta heat loss. So, in this case of method of mixtures, is that when I mix a hot substance with a colder substance, and um, I will get a, a final temperature, which is, um, which is T2, which is T2. T2 here is the temperature of mixture. Okay, so the heat loss by the hot substance will be equal to the heat gain by the, you know, main substance. I mean by the colder substance. And so usually the heat loss, um, if I should use, um, for better understanding, MC theta as the heat loss now by the metal. So where M is the mass of the metal, C is the specific heat capacity, then theta is the temperature change of the metal will be equal to the heat gain by water plus the heat gain by calorimeter, you know, which we can actually represent this. This represents um, the mass of the calorimeter plus the specific heat capacity of the calorimeter plus the mass of water, okay? Then everything multiplied by T2 minus T1, which is the temperature change. Actually, we are also supposed to add the specific heat capacity of water here. Okay, that's very, very important. Now, we see a question here. It says an iron rod of mass 2 kg and a temperature of 280 degrees Celsius is dropped into some quantity of water initially at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. If the temperature of the mixture is 70 degrees Celsius, calculate the mass of the water, neglect heat losses to the surrounding. Okay, now we can see here that we are given the mass of iron. Sorry, the mass of iron is equal to 2 kilogram. Okay, and um, we also, you can see that the temperature, the initial temperature of iron, permit me to call that theta 1, and um, we are given that it is 280 um, Kelvin, or 280, sorry, degrees Celsius. Um, we have 280 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, we are given that it was transferred into some water of initial temperature. So let me say the initial temperature of water. Remember, water and the container where it is contained, we maintain the same temperature. So both of them are theta 2. And um, we are given that it is 30 degrees Celsius. Then also, we can see that the temperature of the mixture is 70 degrees Celsius. So temperature of the mixture, let me use theta to represent temperature of the mixture. And temperature of the mixture is 30 degrees Celsius. So that means this led to this and this also led to this, okay? Now, um, we now have the specific capacity of iron is 460 and that of water is 4200. Okay, so iron has um, the heat capacity of iron, Ci, is equal to 460. And that of water, specific capacity of water is 4,200. 
Now I want you to note something here in this question. Nothing is said about the container. So anytime container is not mentioned, it means that the specific capacity of the container is negligible. It's not to be, um, you know, considered. Okay, so um, in this case now, we can simply say heat gain is equal to heat loss. Heat loss by ion is mc theta. Heat gain by water is also mc theta. Now, but it is now substituting the values. Um, here, the mass of ion here is 2. Specific capacity of ion is 460. The temperature change of ion here, ion change from 280 to 70. Remember, 280 to 70. 70 is the temperature of the mixture after you've mixed them. So, 280 minus 70, I can write that here, 280 minus 70, okay? Now, that is equal to, um, the mass of water is not given, obviously, that is what we are looking for. Now, multiply by the specific capacity of water, which is 4,200. Then, the temperature change of water, water actually changed temperature from 30 to 70. So, it's usually the bigger minus the smaller one, so 70 minus 30, Okay? So it means that 2 times, um, if I want to find my mass now, it's going to be 2 times 460 times 280 minus 70 is 210. Now divided by, um, this is going to be 4200, okay, multiplied by um, 40, okay. So we can go ahead now to um, to calculate, but if I if we should do our... Little calculation here, 21 will go here two times, okay? 2 will go here 1, making it 100. So we are going to have 460 divided by 4000. So let's see our calculator. Let's see 460 divided by um, 4000. Okay, that gives us 0 0.115. So we can come here now. And write the final answer, which is equal to that means the mass of water is equal to 0 0.115 kilogram. This is beautiful. Okay, now we see another question here. In this case, a mass, a metal of mass 200 gram at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius is placed in 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius in a container of negligible heat capacity. Here also. The heat capacity of the container is negligible, okay? If the final steady temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat capacity of the metal. Very, very simple. Here, remember, heat loss equals to heat gain, so mc theta is equal to mc theta. So let's see, what is the mass of the metal? 200 grams, which is something as 0.2 kilograms, sorry, which is something as 0.2, then multiplied by the specific capacity of the metal, is what we are looking for so multiplied by c then times the temperature change of the metal the metal changed the metal was initially at 100 degrees celsius but now it changed temperature to the to the temperature of mixture which is 30 so that will be 100 minus 30 which is 70 which is 70 now equal to the mass of water in the question is 100 grams which means 0 0.1 kilograms sorry 100 grams means 0 0.1 kilogram times specific capacity of water is 4200 then multiply by the temperature change of water and um, here you can see that um, water was initially water was initially here at 25 degrees celsius but the final is still 30 degrees because temperature of mixture is common to both that of water and that of the metal so 30 minus 25 will give us 5 so i come here and I write 5, sorry, I come here and I write 5, this is good, okay, so if we multiply now, here this is going to give us um, 14C is equal to, while um, here is going to give us um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2,100, so that means my C now will be 2,100 divided by 14, I think 7 here, 2, 7 here, 3, so I'm going to get 150 joules per kilogram per Kelvin as the answer to that question. This is also very interesting. Okay, now let's see another question here. Here we have a metal of mass 0 0.5 kilogram is heated to 100 degrees Celsius and then transferred to a well-lacked calorimeter of heat capacity. In this case here, we are considering the calorimeter. 
of its capacity 80 joules per kilogram containing water of its capacity 420 joules per kilogram at 15 degree celsius now if the final steady temperature of the mixture is 25 degrees celsius that's that's which is common to both find the specific capacity of the metal very simple here we use our formula heat loss by the metal is equal to heat gained by water plus heat gained by calorimeter quite easy you know um, you can put symbols if you like now let's see let's start with the metal what is the mass of the metal the mass of the metal is 0 0.5 kg so i'm going to write here 0 0.5 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the metal is what we are looking for so i have here c then multiplied by the temperature change of the metal the metal a metal of mass 0 0.5 kilogram is heated to this this is the initial temperature of the metal the final temperature is the temperature of mixture which is 25 so 100 minus 25 now is going to give us 75 so 75 okay which is equal to now the let's see for water mass of water in the question we are not given mass of water and we are not given specific capacity of water but we are given heat capacity remember that heat capacity cp is equal to mass times a specific heat capacity so in place of mc you can just put cp and the specific the heat capacity of water from the question here is 420 joules per kilogram so i'm going to state here 420 so this 420 is in place of mc mc is the heat capacity multiplied by the temperature change of water the initial temp the initial temperature um, the initial temperature of water um, in this question was 15 degrees celsius and the final temperature is the temperature of mixture final temperature for both cases is the temperature of mixture so that means here the change in temperature is 25 minus 15 which is equal to 10 then plus the same thing here we are not given specific heat capacity of calorimeter but we are given the heat capacity and the heat capacity is 80 so we can come here now mc meaning 80 equal to 80 okay times the temperature change remember temperature change of water is the same thing as the temperature change of the calorimeter okay so 0 0.5 times um, 75 is going to give us 37.5 c okay equal to 420 times 10 is 4200 80 times 10 is 800 okay so 37.5 c is equal to 5000 okay so c which is the specific capacity will now be 5000 divided by 37.5 so let's use our calculator to get that 5000 divided by 37.5 that's going to give us 133.33 so we come here now and write that um, we have 133.33 okay um, joules per kilogram per kelvin this is beautiful